Welcome to Tuesdays with Karen and Martha. And we are here tonight to talk about book lists from our book, The Homeschooling in Times of COVID-19. And we are going to give you tips on how to select the right book list for your child. Right. So what are some main things that you think are the most important, Martha, for getting the right books for your child? Well, thank you for listening to us, um, listeners. And one of the things I usually say to parents when you're selecting books for children is make sure you pay attention to your child's interest. What is your child interested in? If you're not considering your child's interest, you're probably leading a back already. However, you also want to pay attention to the child's educational level. While it is true that you, your district or people might tell you pay attention to text complexity, I would leave text complexity for the text on the level. So for example, your language arts reading on that level, I would leave that for that text complexity. But for book lists, as far as independent reading is concerned, I would pay attention to the child's interest and the child's educational level. There are times when a book might be below a child's educational level, and that takes us to things like Lexi level. So the Lexi level is the level on which, and it's usually represented by a number with an L next to it, that tells us, and by the way, you have a revised Lexi um, level list that came out a couple of years ago, but we can, it can be um, leading because a book might say, um, for example, the book that I wrote, Adventures of Yanni, one is on Lexi level 830 and the other one is 870. Now, what makes the difference? Because I had images in there, then it lowers the leg side. If I to re were to remove the images, the leg side is increased. For example, if I have the word iguana and I have a picture iguana on the page, they're saying that I have assisted the child in figuring out the word, so therefore the leg side level drops. <clears throat> but even if that same book, was written with no images, then it automatically raises the lexile because the child would have to use a dictionary to find the definition of both. There are no pictures in there to make any association with. So lexile kind of, it can throw you off sometimes. Uh, but, you know, if you think about what, you know, this is so interesting <laughs> to me because what are you talking about is the, the concept, the, the scaffolding that the child has and the background that the child has to understand the text. Mm -hmm. So if you get a book that is really in your child's interest area, for example, if I got a book about pictures of flowers or not necessarily even pictures of flowers, but that talked about plants, mm -hmm. my daughter would be engrossed in it because she she's studying horticulture right now. Right. But if I got her a book about war, mm -hmm. even with tons of pictures, she would not be interested in it. Right. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to your child's interest. And why did this tree you want to pay attention to Lexi level, which is what grade level was that book written on? It's not always the most, the most accurate measure. Because we have books on Lexile levels that I say it's going to be on a seventh grade Lexile, but the meaning is so deep that it cannot be explored by a child in the seventh grade level. They would just be reading words and know nothing of what's going on. It would have to be my daughter had a little friend and um, she went to our Quaker meeting and she was a brilliant reader and she was skipped a grade into first grade and she read all of the Harry Potter books when she was six. And I had a problem with that because I thought to myself, how is this child gonna process all this information? Because her, her uh, maturity level, she was still a six-year-old kid. And I don't know if she had the ability to really grasp the information. So emotional preparedness. However, the Harry Potter books are all written on the fifth grade level. 
the lead file here is right right around where I when I wrote Adventures of Yanni, I wrote, it it reads up about eight hundred and thirty for my lead file, and the um, Harry Potter books are eight hundred and ninety, which is right there on the feet there. So a person might look at the Harry Potter book and see the thickness and be like, "Oh, my child can't read that because it's big and it's thick, and it has words like chowder in there." Maybe I, a child from maybe a Caribbean setting would probably be like, "What is that? What is chowder?" Um, when I, you know, there are some words in the Harry Potter book that probably, you know, it's not cultural for some students, but that's where they would have to look it up. But the the, the complexity itself. A six-year-old child, if the child is an advanced reader, can read because of the words. As far as the maturity to understand, again, it would have to deal, be with the background set. So if that child knows everything about those hocus pocus and all those, and the words, just this, you know, some of those words, in it, if they're familiar with it culturally, it's not going to be that far-fetched. But um, <clears throat> even for an adult who is not familiar with that background might have a hard time reading and even understanding those um and that particular book so again it's just that's why i want people to understand that while you want to pay attention to the educational level don't get caught up in it because you may have a book that is supposedly supposed to be for the ninth because i remember i was reading a book in school when a um one of my supervisors walked in and said and that is a sixth grade or a seventh grade book. They were right, but I wasn't reading it for that purpose. My class was reading the book because we were dealing with war time. And the Code Talkers is a book that is on a it's 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 a, a low level, but the, the purpose for reading the book was not for complexity. It was for information. How were the what were the contributions of all of those different um, ethnicities to World War II. How were they treated in the end? So when I look at code talkers, it's, it's teaching at any grade level person how the Native Americans, what contributions they made to World War II. Um, of course, it's on a, maybe a fourth grade level or maybe a fifth grade level. It's not a book that I could say, well, it's a novel that we're going to read for, you know, all of those deep meaning things. It's not. It's only a book for information. We don't have to sit in class and waste six weeks reading a novel because it's not on that. We can give that to our child, let them go home and say, I need you to read chapters one, two, and three, and we can discuss it tomorrow. But it's not for the complexity purpose. So sometimes um, I, I have been chastised, and I know that as public school teachers, we have a book list that is for a particular grade level. But there are times we have to get even the one by um what's this guy who it um the Jewish person who wrote um the one about gosh his name is oh, right the one about the mice no Eli 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 what's his name Whistle Eli he wrote the one about um the Jewish concentration camps or something yes right. That book too is written. The, the uh, boy with the gray pajamas. That one. Not that one. No, the other one by um by Eli Weasel. Eli Weasel. You can look him up. But um the thing is that book too is written on a lower level, but it's something that we want kids to know about. Yeah. So we cannot always go based on well, it's not for that grade level. It's not. It's what is the purpose? Well, if I'm talking about you know. The slave well, sure it's not the mouse, was it that the graphic novel Mouse? No, it is oh. about his experience at a concentration camp. Okay. <clears throat> so, well, you know, I think what you were talking to me about earlier was how, yes, you can get all these lists from important places and that other people have decided are important for your child to learn about and what the body of knowledge is in our society then you really have to look at your child and see what they're particularly interested in. So you were talking about how your son wanted something uplifting, but he wasn't so, you know, and you wanted him to, what was that book? Um, Hear my. So, so um, yes, I was talking about when um, one of the things we might, we might feel that a child, I was trying to find out the book for you, Eli, where, um, 
what is it what is it doing? okay so we can we can sometimes because we find kids my son there was a certain time in his life when he just loved books everything he saw he when he just picked it up and he read he made his own choices and then as when i became a teacher on the high school level and i started coming across those books especially the ones that spoke or that dealt with how children of african-american um descent were what their struggles were in the south um, I just picked it up and I gave it to him to read. It was called his Roll of Thunder Here My Cry was the one book. And that was the first time my son told me that um, just plain out. He was ninth grade, it was eighth grade or ninth grade. And he said to me, I do not want to read these books um, because they're depressing. And he just felt that he wanted to read. So he wanted to make his own selections. He loved books. And I was just thinking that I could just throw out a book and say, okay, you need to learn about what struggles people had in those and he to him it was depressing he didn't want to deal with that kind of 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 information or knowledge and he rather read read books from isaac asimov where they were for um you know in this science fiction world where you could just do that kind of imagination so you could do all your imagination going on so we want to make sure that we yes help kids become um culturally aware by giving them books from a variety of cultures but at the same time we want to make sure that we do not shy them away from books because we're giving them things that are just not in their interest and so that's why i am i i, I support very much for independent reading yes and like my daughter i noticed that her favorite english teacher was this teacher who presented books that had a female protagonist mm -hmm. who was really active and saved the day on this pirate ship. And, mm -hmm. oh, my daughter just loved that book. And she really, you have to, it's like pulling teeth to get her to read, but it's the story that's important too, when you're talking about great literature. So they would read aloud sometimes. So that would help. And, and also to, I would take my daughter sometimes to, um, book festivals to meet authors even and right. so you can so they can appreciate all kinds of literature and also the newspaper is another book that you should it's not really a book but it is reading material that you should definitely have on your list of things to read because you can keep abreast and keep knowledgeable of the different books that are out there, what's new, what's on the bestseller list. You can cut out pictures. You can talk about political events. And the newspaper is generally on a fourth grade reading level most often. Yeah. yeah. Fourth, fifth. So it's something that is easy to read for older students. And um, and you, it's something you can discuss with your child. Mm -hmm. And um, so I really think newspapers are very valuable oh well, yes they are and I, when i imagine i'm right there in, in florida too i'll tell you what i did with the newspaper um so i had the writing to respond process and we'll talk about that in another episode where we had students read and had to respond to what they read and so on fridays students had to bring in one newspaper they didn't have to purchase one they could have collected it a monday paper or tuesday paper it doesn't matter what day but Friday, every child had to come in with a paper. And I said, don't go buy in a paper. Just check to see when somebody's finished with their paper and hold on to it. And so on Friday, every child had a newspaper and we read things, whether it was current events, whether it was the opinion pages, and they had to discuss it and write in response to it. When I was in a school in Florida, Heritage High School, the, um, not the New York Times, the other one, the Wall Street Journal, they sent an email saying that we could have gotten newspapers from them. And I started thinking of myself in Virgin Islands where I had kids bring in newspaper. And so I told them, yes, I wanted to. And I asked for 150 papers. I thought it was supposed to be 150 papers a week. I got 150 papers a day. And that was outrageous. <laughs> I had papers and I didn't know what to do with it. But this, my kids were having fun. They would actually... If those of them who wore glasses, they would put it on their nose and they would pretend they were their grandparents. And they were like, who reads the newspaper? But they had assignments from there. 
they have to read the newspaper and they have to use, when we were doing um, citing textual evidence, that's what we used. When we were reading something in our books, we would find something in the newspaper. For example, there was some um, we were dealing with the burden of the flag in Texas on um, that case, Texas versus Johnson. And at the same time, you had the Colin Kaepernick case where you had the kneeling of the, for the anthem and so. So we were able to pull that out of the newspaper and make that connection. You know, when you had this immigrant and the wall issue, and then you had, we had something on the newspaper dealing with, um, you know, another Israel and, and, and Pakistan and all of those, you know, not Pakistan, but Palestine. So we were able to make those connections almost every week. There was something in the paper we could have made connections with our daily reading. So the, the newspaper is so valuable. And kids were asking, they were saying that it's only their grandparents read the newspaper. And I had them reading the newspaper and they had to because there were assignments. When we learned to do the MLA format, they had to learn to do it using the newspaper. And so I found fun ways to have my students, even if I had too many papers a day, I didn't need 150 a day, but um, we were able to use the newspaper to get students to read and to get fun reading. So we want you to understand that, yes, you want to read things that your child is interested in, but you can also have them read things like the newspaper. And another thing we want you to do is to look for cultural diversity. Karen, tell us about that, um, the signal people. Oh yeah, well, I was reading the newspaper and I saw the book, um, I'm Not Dying With You Tonight mm -hmm. um, by uh, Gilly Siegel and Kimberly Jones. And it is about two girls that get stranded in a concession stand, one black and one white girl um, who are stuck in a concession stand during a race riot and helped each other get home and how they made it through the night and all the perceptions that they had. And it was a beautiful book and it kept me reading through the night and I got it for my daughter and she read it. And she was, you know, she went to football games. She played in the band. So she understood what it was like to be in a concession stand in a, at a football game and, you know, what, how that something like that could explode in and um i think um that book is written for high school students and it's not on any book list that was written four years ago or 40 years ago a lot of the books mm -hmm. right now that they're reading at some of the most prestigious schools are books that have been tried and true and maybe have um, messages that fit with the old paradigm of you know exactly. power structures in our society that most of them do not have even women as powerful protagonists. Exactly, exactly. So here we are, two girls braving it through the night, and mm -hmm. it was really powerful. So and I think I love that book. Right. And so here is where we want to tell people yes, the, in our schools, we have, you know, book lists, and some of them are as old as they. Um, the book I was talking about a while ago is night. So the point is, we want to be able to expose our kids to books that are not on their school book list, or if they are at home, not on the book list that the state recommends. Um, for in, 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 in the case of what you're saying, you're saying that you were reading the newspaper and you came across, you say, hey, that's a good book. Let me read it and let me recommend it to my daughter. And here it is, your daughter is being exposed to, or introduced to diverse, a book that, that explores, you know, culture. Yeah, I, that, I want my daughter to be on the cutting edge yes, of our society. Able, and that is going to bring, in my opinion, that's what's going to bring her forward into positive learning experiences and pos a positive life and being part of society. So, and how to treat people too, how to treat other people, especially who are and being able to introduce our, and, and that's what I want parents to do. Introduce your child to books that are not necessarily only focused on your cultural background. Whether you are white, African-American, Hispanic, we want to you know, have your child read books across racial, a cultural um, um, setting. 
have your child read books that are written across um, regional settings. You know, a child shouldn't have to just watch, for example, Moana to know about life in Hawaii. You should be able to have your child read about a book that is set in Hawaii or set in Africa or set in the Caribbean, not just set in your state where you live. I, I mean, I am not against reading books that are set in your state or written by your state um, authors, but you want your children to be, to have that diversity, to be able to, 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 to keep a conversation, you know, about something from, uh, from another culture. If we have to look at, just imagine, and I remember you, 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 you brought that example about your grandma, a book that she wasn't able to oh, read. Yes, yeah, I mean, it's so interesting that my grandmother told me a story that, about how she loved books. And sometimes having a book that you're not allowed to read can be a very powerful motivator. <laughs> and so when she was 16 years old, the book Lady Chatterley's Lover was read by her, all of her girlfriends. She had like five girls in her group and they read through that book. The pages were worn down to the bone because that book, you had to be 21 years old and you had to go to like the drugstore and only 20 year olds with an ID could read that book. Now you think about that book, it's now on the book list for high school. Right. So, so that takes me now to the banned book list. So when you have books such as, um, I have a few of them here, The Catcher in the Rye was a banned book. You have The Native Son by Richard Wright, banned book, um, The Color Purple, Think about those books that we read or we watch the film. These were all books that were not allowed in the classroom, not allowed in books, not allowed to be read by kids. Um, Lord of the Flies. I mean, you see Lord of the Flies on the book list right now. But all of those books were banned books. So with time, things change because um, people's perception change and people are able to say, well, why should I not be able to read it? Some of them, um, like their eyes were watching God is for um, explicit language. But the others were just because they were talking about other cultures and how maybe think of To Kill a Mockingbird. I mean, that was also a banned book. Now it's, it's on the book list. So we want you to encourage your child to read books that are from different cultures. You know, what, I want to pipe in here one second. I was just thinking as you said that about banned books. We don't really have banned books anymore but we do have forgotten books. Mm -hmm. So I think what happens is some of the best books are getting snubbed right now. And that means they're just not, nobody's paying attention to them because there's a, a counterculture, there's things going on in our society where people, that's, they, they're trying to stop these things from happening or from people being aware. And so I think we owe it to each other to be aware and know about the literature that's being presented to us and be the change we wanna see. Right, and so one of the things that I know that Kindle has done, Amazon, they have made the classics available for free. So things like um, 1984 and even Animal Farm. I mean, Animal Farm, who could think Animal Farm? was banned right here in Florida, was one nope. of the- I didn't know Animal Farm was banned. Yes, Animal Farm was one of the books, you could look it up, right here in Florida, uh, it was banned. So the point is most of those, just a, a, an important thing that you just said is they can be forgotten. But what the Kindle has done, Amazon Kindle, they have made the classics available for free. So if you have a Kindle, you are able to read the classics without paying so at least that's one way of making sure that they're not truly forgotten. So probably things like the Animal Farm to Kill a Mockingbird, 1984 by George Orwell. Those books, you are able to find them, um, read them on the Kindle without paying for them. So again, how do we get our kids to read them? We would have to pass it on. Um, sometimes you have to wait until you get to the high school where a teacher tries to shove it down your throat. But it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be. 
Um, we should be able to encourage our kids to read books that are classic, but at the same time, if a child is going to feel that this book is going to be depressing and I do not want to read it, they shouldn't be forced to read it either. Um, it's just the way I feel. I, it, I personally, as an adult, I have books that I have started that I have not completed and probably I will never complete. And for now, I do audible. I'm not even reading paper books anymore. I'm listening to books. And if it's not, and if it's not something that I can press through, I stop. So I feel one of the things, just one thing, one of the things we, we encourage kids when they come to the media center, we say to them, you can pick two books. And if you don't like it, it's okay. Bring it back and change it. We, what do we you think give that, up, that, that option. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the um, play more abridged uh, classics? The, the which one? They're um, abridged classics. There's like a whole series of them. Oh, like um, there's one I saw. The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Little Bit of Dead. They have the, the on Perry, the House on a Perry, whatever. You mean those? Yeah, you can buy them in Books A Million. They have like a mm -hmm. whole set of like 30 of them that you can buy there in hardback. Yeah. Um, yeah, some people still look for collections. Again, it's up to how you, sadly, I mean, a lot of those things we can't, unless you, you, we, you cannot, if your child is in a school setting, you cannot wait for just the school setting to get your child to read. You have to find a way to infuse it in your child. And if you have your child as a homeschooling, as we just um, suggested, like homeschooling in time of COVID-19, if you're homeschooling your child, you want to make sure that you can introduce your child to books. And how do you do that? Go ahead, look at the newspaper, look for the best-selling book um, list, go to your state department of education and look for book list. Um, go ahead and just find out. One child came to the media center a year ago and say, do you have the hate you give? We didn't have it in the media center. Um, the, the librarian had to quickly order it, but the child had, had um, heard of the books, either on the radio or the TV or somewhere else. But um, it wasn't in our library yet. So the, but that child was um, exposed to books at home. Um, I don't know if you know of the, the, the story that they to give, there's a movie to it right now, but it has to do with this whole shooting of black, you know, the experience. Somebody was in the car when a, a relative was shot by the police. So it, it, it's kind of what's happening right now. We want to just encourage you parents um, Remember, we are talking about homeschooling in time of COVID-19. Um, COVID-19, fall is about to come on us. And from what we're hearing, it's going to be um, probably infection rates are higher. So your kids are probably going to be home even more than they are right now. Um, it's not that we wish for it, but it's, it's, it's one of the realities that we might experience. So what we want to encourage you to do is while you're getting your book list for your child or encouraging your child to read, don't just focus on what schools might encourage them to read. Make it a point of duty to, to expose your child to books from other cultures. Make sure you're looking for books with values in it. Yes, you want to make sure that you pay attention to the values that you uphold as a family, whether it's fairness, whether it's kindness, but make sure that you're finding those kind of books. You want to get books that are written from different cultures because you want your child to be able to keep a conversation. As I said earlier, for example, we had a situation where a student came in and said, do you have the book, the hit you gave in, in the media center? Our media center didn't have it yet. The librarian quickly looked it up and ordered it. That is a book that talks about the racial tension that's going on right now in, in, in the United States. And um, it became a movie eventually. Um, very recent, talking about, you know, one person's experience from being in a car where somebody else was shot by the police. These are realities that African-American kids um, face. And if they can read about those, um, Karen spoke a while ago about books where we can have characters that empower. So what kind of books are your girls reading? Are they reading books that where they're always oppressed, where something bad is happening to them? Or you're letting your girls read books that give them that, show them that they can be in charge, that they can do whatever they want to do. 
We want to be able to make sure that we select the books that can empower our children. Yes, we want them to read books about what experiences people had in the Great Depression. But we want to make sure also that we can we cannot just stick only to those books, especially for African American kids. We don't want those kids to believe that it's only that what exists about them. There are better things to. There are good stories. There are stories where of powerful black women or black men or black families. So we want to make sure that we find those. And the other book that you suggested, I'm, I'm not dying with you tonight. That is also a book that talks about how we can get along, how we can have each other's backs, no matter what the color of our skins are. So as you make, as you make your selection for books, I want you to consider all of those things. Consider the values, consider the grade level, or the lexile level, but that's not the most important thing to look for. Consider the cultural diversity and all of those different things that you want because you want your child to be able to keep a conversation. And one last thing, there's what we call the knowledge gap. The knowledge gap we are finding is basically there's that gap between kids who know and kids who do not know. So yes, a child may be in school and they're doing the same curriculum but the child who's going to do the best on the test is the child who is reading more than what the classroom teacher gave them to read. And if so you have a non-reader too, take them to book festivals, take them to take them to book festivals, yes. So they get the knowledge. Give them that opportunity to be exposed to book and books and let them see it's okay to have books. So I want to encourage you parents, take your child to the, to the, to the library. And if it's too far and you don't have a car and you don't have those and this and that, use the newspaper as well. If you have a Kindle, you have internet, the Kindle, they put all the classics are free on the Kindle. You don't have to buy one of them. So get your child exposed to reading because in the long run, it's gonna be, they're gonna be more powerful and get books with characters in there that empower your child. Thank you for listening. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Again, this has been Karen and Martha helping you navigate books for your child while you homeschool or even e-learn with your child during this COVID-19. Thank you. Bye.